thermal processing aspect to it, stirring the chocolate and that light temperature to crystallize it. That chocolate will have a shine and a snap to it. Most important is the heating temperature. Hi, I'm Bill Fredericks. I'm also known as the Chocolate Man. Today we're going to teach you how to use polycarbonate molds in a, a total variety of different ways. We're going to uh, make multicolored molds. I'm going to teach you how to use a regular chocolate, white chocolate and dark chocolate to create a, a whole variety of different accents. Uh, and then we're also going to use colored cocoa butter to do the same thing, doing all kinds of different effects, different accents. We're going to make our own transfer sheets. We're going to use transfer sheets. We're going to use structure sheets. And I know none of this means much to you yet, but you'll, you'll learn in the course of the day. And then last of all, we're going to do some airbrushing, some uh, colored airbrushing with uh, colored cocoa butter. So the whole purpose of this class is to really show you the incredible variety of things you can do with polycarbonate molds. They're really fun to work with. The very first thing, we're, and also I'll mention, uh, I'm going to assume you know how to uh, temper chocolate. It's critical in working with any kind of mold that the chocolate you use is tempered. Tempered chocolate is pre-crystallized chocolate. It, 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 there's, a, there's a thermal process you have to go through with uh, stirring the chocolate at the right temperature to pre-crystallize it. That chocolate will have a shine and a snap to it. And most importantly for tempering, when we make a mold, or for, for molding, excuse me, uh, when we uh, fill up our mold, the tempered chocolate, when it sets and, and gets chilled in the refrigerator, it will actually contract. That's what breaks it free from the mold. If you don't temper your chocolate, you can do everything else we're doing, but nothing will come out of the mold. And it will all bloom, it'll all turn white, chalky, powdery. Um, it's a general disaster. There's no way to recover from that. Um, so you really have no tempering chocolate. We've covered that in our previous uh, video, so we're not gonna cover it today. I'm assuming you know how to temper. I have tempered. I like to accent all my, my truffles. I like them to uh, be quite pretty. So this is a plain, clean mold. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of dark chocolate in and rub it around. What this will do is give you, make the vein stand out just a little bit. Fairly simple to do. Every mold is different. I'm not putting uh, much, mo uh, much dark chocolate in. I'm frankly what are using the a line. What you'll end up with is a and you have, and, and but you'll, you have to play with it to get the right speed. But as you, you can get different effects. It's all because you cut it at an angle, so it'll automatically do. Because we have to keep our, our surface clean. We're going to be casting this in dark chocolate. One nice thing, since it hasn't been refrigerated, none of the chocolate will come out. So we. You can knock it out. You're not going to lose any of your special effects. They're all solid. They're, they're stuck in there. Not a big deal. Same thing we'll do with these. We we'll want to clean these. Kind of whitish. Some are real shiny. Some are dull. Real fruit is not all the same. And this is going to have a real nice effect, you'll see. It's a race to the end here. Just two more. I'll do some light. There's a little bit of blue on that. We'll back that. And over the orange, just for the heck of it, I'm going to shoot two with a little iridescent also. In fact, we'll shoot four. Once again, just playing. Very, very light, but that's how this stuff works. Uh, we need some more paper towels. Clean off the. Uh, as I rub it off, you can actually begin to pick up some of the iridescent color. Okay. That's got a nice effect. Believe it or not, that's what I'm trying to get. 
nice kind of smeared color. Okay, that's all I want. Then hopefully, uh, my spatula is not, not getting in the middle here where I want, but that's okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. There we go, a little more color. Okay, whoops, we got a dot there, but I want that. So I'm actually keeping it submerged under the ganache at all times until I'm done. Right here, I'm stop uh, squeezing and I pull out. And this is actually very fluid ganache. At other times, what'll happen uh, if it's a thicker ganache, then as, as you stop squeezing and as you pull out, it'll actually uh, suck the ganache down because you're actually pulling volume out of the ganache. The empty cone, the, excuse me, the full cone. Okay, so these are nicely, nicely filled. So now we'll do our, our cocoa pods. I remember, we'll find out. Almost all came out, two stuck. One stuck because I didn't I clear all the chocolate off. That's not unusual. And this one, I'll just knock her out. So these are the ones that had the, the iridescent kind of a colored cocoa butter. That goes in there. Once again, these had the orange finger swiping with a white shot in the background. This had a little bit of blue with the purple, with the orange, and then we had different effects. This was the uh, iridescent with a little shot of white.